Today's video is going to be all about trying some new makeup items. I have been out shopping in the last three or four weeks and finally I am here to try them all on and give you a first impressions, little tips along the way. So let's say this is my try on new makeup tutorial video. <laughs> all right, my friends. So if you want to know how I got this look and all the new products that I am trying, stick around. Okay, so let's get started. First, I, of course, prepped my face, which meant all of my skincare, but I do eye mask and face mask all the time, all the time. So I thought I would share with you that today uh, I am using the Dermatology. These are the brightening eye masks. This is like my second or third jar of them. I like them. They do take some getting used to because they are kind of like a jelly form mask, but they do come with a little spatula that you can easily separate them. And uh, I like to use these. Once I open these up, I like to use it every day. I put a ma eye mask on before I go to the gym every day. So uh, I like to use them up so that they don't dry up on me. So these I do like a lot. And then I have a brand new face mask. Uh, if you watch me all the time, you know that I love an enzyme mask. And Osmosis has their autumn mask. And it is an enzyme spice mask. Now I will say I was expecting a little bit more warmth because of the word spice. But it's a very comfortable mask and it just eats away all the dead skin and just really sets you up with a beautiful canvas for your makeup. So I did go in with this today. I would not use this daily. I would use this maybe once or twice a week. Depending on your skin type, I'm very sensitive. So I can't use it more than once or twice a week. And I leave it on for about 15 minutes. Uh, I bought a new lip mask. I really do love lip masks. These I use mainly at night, but before I'm going to do a tutorial, I always do my zip which helps to lift the face immediately. So you guys think I'm younger than I am. Maybe I'm fooling myself into believing that's what you think. Anyway, uh, it is the Tatcha mask. I was just strolling through Sephora the other day and just threw anything in my cart that was new to me, may not be new to all of you, but for me it was. So uh, I do like the Kiehl's uh, nighttime mask. But uh, Tatcha is a beautiful line, so I decided to go with this. It comes with its little applicator, and I uh, left that on for about 20 minutes as well. So now we are going to get started. I'm going to first prime, and I'm going to use two primers. This one here is the Jane Aradell. This was a sample I got from Nordstrom. This is uh, for illuminating glow, and I'm also going to use the Vanish Airbrush Primer. I've had this for a while. I'm using this for a reason and you will see in a moment, but I'm just going to take a small amount of this one first, and I'm going to apply this in the T-zone to try to camouflage out the pores. And uh, as I have mentioned in several of my tutorials, my pores are an issue for me now, never before, but now they are with age. So I'm just going to apply that, and notice I push and I slide. I don't really rub. I push and slide a pore primer in, and this one is supposed to blur, so it really does work well. And now let's try out the Jane Aradell, which I have not tried. I've tried some other Jane Aradell products, but I've never tried this, so why not? And this one is an illuminating, and you know if I go for the glow all the time because, again, it's all about the youthful glow, my friends. So I'm just going to massage that, pat it in. And I am just doing this on the outer surface of the face. It's okay if you accidentally get a little bit over the pore primer. It really doesn't disturb it at all. It feels good on the skin. It, has, it spreads well. Not, it doesn't really have a smell, but again, we're going for that glow, so this is how it sets my skin up for that glow. <laughs> All right, so I this is brand new, and this is called the Veil Hydrating Skin Tint from Hourglass. I thought I would give this a try, and that this, was, this is the number five. It was the last one in my Sephora. So uh, we are going to give this a go, and this is what it looks like. It comes in a package. And it is a squeeze tube, not a pump, which I do prefer the squeeze tube. 
And let me just remove this little seal. Okay, so let's just squirt some of this on my glass block so you can see the consistency of it. So it has a slight run to it, not a quick run. So it's not super thin, but it's not super thick. And I'm gonna go ahead, and again, the color I have is number five. I'm gonna put a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here and here and i'm actually going to go in with a sponge today and do one side and see how it looks now for the sponge i'm going to load up and i'm just going to tap pounce this is going to give me a sheer coverage Okay, so it does have a beautiful finish to it. It's minimal coverage, which is okay. It is not covering my little age spots here, little pigmentation there. It is not covering those up. Uh, and it does kind of sheer out. So I'm going to go in with my most favorite foundation brush, and this is the BK Beauty 101. And let's just pick up what's left and let's see what the brush does before I add any more because what you can probably build this I have not watched any reviews or anything like that on this it's been out for a while okay, so it really does shear it out so let's go ahead and apply a little bit more so that's what I'm putting on I'm going to go in with the brush and really build it onto the edge of the brush and I'll put a little bit here a little bit here and I'm going to start in the t-zone area touching with my hand to make sure that I have it blended nicely. It really does give beautiful coverage. It's not, this is two coats, it's not, still not covering this. So this is definitely for uh, those who are not trying to cover up anything. It does have a pretty glow to it. It feels comfortable on the skin. And I think it would pretty much live up to what it says a hydrating skin tint so this is for those of us who don't really want to wear a foundation look every single day and uh, i would say have minimal uh, imperfections to cover up i did not take it underneath my eyes purposely because i am going to use a different product for underneath my eyes so I'm going to go in with my fit glow beauty this is the peach corrector and I'm going to apply a little bit of it on my discoloration here and a little bit on the one in the center of my forehead and then I will just take the sponge the sponge is damp and I'm going to just lightly tap that in and this automatically covers it all. And then there's just a tiny bit left on the glass block and I'll just go over it, just tapping lightly, take the sponge and just go over it. You see that it really does camouflage it out. So uh, this is also a very nice product for underneath the eyes and also for any discol light discoloration, I would say. Uh, you can go in before or after. And the peach is so subtle that it really does uh, blend down, but it, it does work. I mean, you can see it's camouflaging out the green veins on my hand without looking like a mask. Let me just tap it out. And you can see how it really does camouflage the green out. So really, really a good product. I like the way it wears. 
um, it's, it's worth looking into if you're somebody who, who really has a lot of uh, darkness. Like I have a lot of darkness right here, I'm not but going I'm going to really uh, do any corrections underneath the eye because I am going to try the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer. I also, I also, and have already tried this one, and I do like it, is the Makeup by Mario, and this is the Surreal Skin Awakening Concealer, and the color that I tried was 3D1. This is not a bad concealer. I want to wear it a couple more times in very humid climate so I can really give you a good opinion of it. So uh, I have seen a lot of people talking about this on Instagram. I try not to watch the YouTube videos. I don't really watch a lot of beauty YouTube videos. And even to the people I'm subscribed, and I'm sure it's the same for many of you, I don't watch every single video they do. It has to really interest me. Uh, so I see a lot of things on Instagram and unfortunately on Instagram a lot of the girls on Instagram are younger and I will say a lot of them use filters and I really wish they wouldn't because it is deceiving to me so anyway um, this is the Na Natasha Denona high glam concealer it's brightening and hydrating crease proof serum concealer and i did not I, d I have no place to buy a natasha denona locally so i have to go online and i did go to the natasha denona site because it was the only site that still had this palette available and i did buy this a uh, week and a half, two weeks ago. So uh, it may not be in stock anymore because I know it was selling out quickly everywhere. But anyway, I um, did their color pick for me and they picked N7. Remember, I don't like a lot of lightness underneath my eyes. I think as an aging woman, uh, if you go too light with your concealer, it actually works against us. So it's okay to have a little brightness under the eye, but too much brightness uh, I think, in my opinion, for me, accentuates my age. So this is what it looks like. It's a pretty tube. Natasha Denona has beautiful eyeshadows. I don't think I have anything else in Natasha Denona. I don't even think I have a foundation by her, um, but uh, we're going to give this a try. So here is the color swatch on my hand, and it's not too bad. It really isn't. It has a... Uh, slight yellow undertone to it, uh, it but it's not bad at all okay so I'm going to go in lightly with this and I'm going to just put it here and here and then of course on the sides and I like to take it up the temple a little bit because that helps to pull that out again as long as it's not dark on the temples you can lift it out because we do lose volume there as well okay so I'm going in with the damp beauty blender and I'm just going to apply this to the temple on the top of the eyebrow and all of the outer eye and I just I'll let you see that before I go on to the next eye you can see that by putting that brightness it actually starts to do the lifting for me already. So I'm going to go ahead, and this is really blending beautifully with the Beauty Blender. Although this isn't the Beauty Blender, this is the Colleen Rothschild sponge, and it really, I love it, but I don't think it's available anymore. It really is going on beautifully. So let's just do the inner corner. And I like to flick because I have some wrinkles that refuse to play the game. <laughs> so I do, I, I kind of pull and flick because it opens those wrinkles up and fills them in. And then I will just use this as a base for my eye. Boy, this is really a beautiful application. And the color is almost perfect. It really is a really pretty finish. Okay, so we'll just see how that plays. Of course, I'm going to have to put a little bit of powder because they just will not stay for me. And I'm gonna do the same thing here, up on the brow, pull my white hair away, and go right through the temple area to brighten that up. Again, lifting up on the brow and through the temple. And we'll fill this in 
the next time I'll use even less when I try this because it does give really good coverage. Very nice. Okay, now we'll go right here. And again, I'm flicking and pulling slightly. And then let's just do the whole lid. I like to really focus here because that's where a lot of my darkness is. So there is the foundation and the concealer. At first glance, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to set this a little bit. And today we're going to play with the Pat McGrath Labs. This is not don't new. I use it a lot, so I thought I better start using some of these things this up. This is the Light Medium 2. It does have a slight yellow tint to it, which may work against me now because of the white halo. But I'm just going to take what's in the lid, and this is the 102. And I'm just going to pounce this all over, and then I'll be right back because you've seen me do my powder a million times. Okay, so there is the powder on the whole face. So now let me just take a look-see underneath the eye. I'm going to use my finger and tap it in so that it is smoothly laying underneath the eyes. And then I'm going to go ahead and press it underneath and above. And that is the look it gives me. Now, this powdery look, I will, of course, take away when I use my setting spray. Okay, so the next item is not new. I used it in my last tutorial. It is the Pat McGrath Labs. And this is the Bronze Without Caution. And this one is Naked Desire. It is the lightest one, I believe. And I'm going to go ahead and just apply this. Now, today I'm using a looser brush than I have used in my last tutorial. For those of you who like a bronzing brush, and I'm just going to stay high up on the cheek, and remember, hold the brush further back, and then it, you have less of a tendency to smash it so the brush is too, uh, there's too much on your face then. So we're just going back and forth. You can still tap a little bit. Don't go in the temple area because you close it off. You want the forehead. Stay away from your hairline if you have blonde or white hair. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. My rollers have fallen out from, my hair has been in the rollers since whoo, about five o'clock this morning. And let me tell you, it is quarter to nine. So people ask me, how long do you leave your rollers in until they're ready, till I'm ready? So they are starting to fall out <laughs> because uh, they uh, have been in there for a long time and I've been moving around a lot. I'm going to go in with a blush and this is from Bare Minerals and it is Call My Blush. And that's what it looks like. Now, okay, going in with the Refer 05. And I am going to tap that higher on the cheeks. This is a really pigmented blush as well, picks up nicely and really goes on smoothly, as you can see. And then we can just go back and forth. Again, go in with your powder brush to soften any lines. Okay, so I did my eyebrows off camera. It's just much easier. And I did use the Anastasia uh, brow whiz in soft brown and then I went over those nasty little white hairs with the Anastasia tinted brow gel in brunette. Okay so now we're going to go in with something else that is new and this is the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Palette. Now uh, unfortunately I will apologize in advance if you cannot get this um, you can find other palettes that have a lot of the similar colors. They may not be the same in quality because she does happen to have some of the best uh, formulas. I like Christian Dior eyeshadows. I like Natasha Denona. I like Mario and I like NYX. So for right. those of you who have been longing for this, I do apologize. I got lucky on the Natasha Denona site. But I follow her on Instagram, and she did uh, pretty much say that it's almost sold out everywhere. So you will just have to wait for it to come back in stock. But hopefully, uh, if it's not a limited edition, which I don't believe it is, 
Hopefully it will come back in stock before the holidays. So put these things on your Christmas list. Okay, so this is what the palette looks like. You have seen it umpteen million times on YouTube. That's and I'm going in with a rougher number one brush, which is my most favorite brush. And I think I'm going to go in with Fair to start with. And I just love her eyeshadows. Um, you do get some fallout with them, but it's just a matter of really working it into the brush. So I'm and just going to take this all in the center of my eye. And I am going in the crease and lifting up with this slightly, building it up in the center. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of it all the way to the inner eye. These just go on so nice, my friends. They really, really do. Do the same thing on the other eye. Okay, so we have done the center. Now I'm gonna go in with a rougher number two brush, and I'm gonna go in with stone first. Just put some of that on the brush, like so. I'm gonna to touch it just to make sure I get any excess, maybe give it a little tap. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in the corner and start building that up. If you have a hooded eye, you will apply, keep your eyes looking straight ahead and apply just above the crease. So you can see it lifts up. I can do it either way. And then you can go ahead and fill in the rest and just really blend that out. So today we're gonna to do a really lifted outer. So if you look, you can see that gives an immediate lift. So I'm going to go in and every step of the way I do my blending. So I'm gonna go ahead and just soften that edge on the outer and the upper. And I'm just going to take that stone again and I wanna fill it in Right here. Okay, so we have built them up. So and now, now I'm going to take a number one brush. I'm going to go in with Vague. And I'm going to just touch it and t on the tip. Touch it. And I'm going to just work on the middle crease area, lifting up just slightly. I want the colors to seamlessly blend into each other. These are so nice to work with. Turn the brush around and softly feather it out. And we're going to take a little bit more of that color and just really build up right here. Same on the other eye. Just building up slightly. And then I'm going to go in, go back in with your clean brush, and just really soften that line. Okay. Now I'm going to take the brush that I use, the number two with the darker shade, and I'm just going to sweep up along on the side here. Okay. Same thing. Okay. All right, so now we're going to go into Silhouette, which is the darkest in the pal palette. And I'm just going to take the number 29 and load it up on that brush. And I'm going to tap it off. 
and I'm going to stay close to the lash line here. Tap it on first, and then we're going to extend it out just slightly. Take a little bit more of that color. Extend it out and up. I'm going to take Vague again. Just press into it lightly. And I just want to build that color up slightly right here. And then we're just sweeping lightly. Okay, so that is the eye look. Now I'm going to take Whisper and I'm going to go in with my finger and just pop a little bit of sheen right in the center, low to the bright lash line. I'm not bringing this color up, staying really close to the lash line with it. And then lifting up only slightly. Okay, same thing on the other eye. Okay, so there is the light shimmer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brush where I used Vague, and I'm just going to go over that slightly because it's a little bit too bright for my eye. So if I just take the remaining of that color that is on the brush and I do a light sweep over it, it will just help to warm it up slightly so that it's more wearable for me. You see? Okay, so that is pretty much the eye look. You can go ahead and smudge it all the way under if you want. Okay, so that is the eye look using the I Need a New Nude Palette from Natasha Denona. Okay, so we're going to tight line, going to go in with the Laura Mercier bronze pencil, and I'm going to go over to the mirror to tight line because uh, it takes me less time. Okay, I have tight lined, and I'm also going to just really carve out the edge here. Just helps to elongate my eyes a little bit. I swear as we get older, the eyeballs shrink. Okay, Laura Mercier Caviar Eyeliner Pencil in Bronze. We shall see how it lasts if it transfers. Okay, so for my eyes, I'm going to use my Refer Lash Curler. And we are going to try the Clinique. It's a new mascara. I'm going to, it's called High Impact High Five Volume Mascara. So let me go ahead and curl my eyelashes because if I don't curl them, there's no use putting mascara on them. So I'll be right back. I don't think I have ever tried a Clinique mascara. So as usual, I'm going to lay it at the roots and just kind of drag it through to see how we build up. You really want to get the roots first. And then I will just sweep through. And as I have mentioned before, my lashes are in a pathetic state right now because I had stopped using my Revita Lash while in Buffalo. Not on purpose, I forgot to bring it with me. So I just am starting from stage one. Okay, so far it's, it's okay. It's not wowing me, but it's okay. Let's do the other side. I don't think I like the application of it. It's already looking like I slept in it, went to the bar, and didn't wash my face the night before. Again, if you love it though, <laughs> forgive me. But this is just my, I don't really like this at all. I've made a little um, error here, so I have to let that dry and then I'll just scrape it off. Let's go in with a second coat. I don't like the application of it. It's clumpy. It really does. It looks like that I've been out partying all night, slept in my makeup, and then instead of washing my face, just went to work. I had so many people I used to work with that would do that, and it was always gross to me. They would just go to work in last night's makeup. That is just gross. And some women never outgrow that. They just 
you can tell that they've just applied new mascara on over old mascara because it looks like this. All right, so, so far I'm not loving this. It does, it, there's an impact. You know, it really brings the eyes out, but um, not loving the application of it. But let's be fair, my lashes are in a horrible state right now. So it could get better, but uh, for first impression, I'm not loving it. So we'll have to see how it um, lasts. So okay, so the next item was sent to me, and I was really, I was excited when they contacted me and asked me if I would like to try these. Um, nothing was expected of me, uh, but they just really wanted to know what I thought of them. And so they are the new Color Lux Hydrating Cream Lipsticks from Jane Aradell. And uh, the box is really pretty that it came in. And there are many, many colors to this, from what I understand. And they are color rich. There's 15 highly pigmented one swipe shades deliver bold payoff with a satin finish. So I'm gonna love that. They are smooth and creamy, rich yet weightless formula glides on smooth without tugging or feathering. So we are going to give them a try. And I have one, two, I have five of the colors. So I, for my lips, I think I'm going to go in with Candy Apple. I think that was the shade. Yes, I had decided on Candy Apple. So let me, I'm debating whether I want to swipe it on without my lip liner or with. Let me go ahead and swipe it on just on my lip. Not, I won't do my whole lips. I'll just swipe it so you can see what a swipe looks like. That's a swipe. So they are really saturated. They go on smoothly. I could go so in I'm with either one of these liners. I could go in with NYX in hot red or plush red. I think hmm, I'm going to go in with plush red. So I'll go ahead. I am a lip liner person all the way. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this up. Mm. Just gorgeous. Mm. Beautiful. Very saturated. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Very saturated in color, beautiful, just gorgeous. They're all beautiful. Oh, a beautiful finish, beautiful feel. Not wet and sloppy, so it's not going to bleed all over the place. The wetter the lipstick, the more it's going to bleed. That's why we have a problem with glosses. But a lot of us wear glosses in lighter shades so that it's not as noticeable. But these, oh, they're beautiful. Really, really pretty, and like I said. And ladies, here is proof. You can wear a dark color, and it doesn't make your lips disappear if you wear the right formula. If you're trying to wear a matte lipstick, a matte lipstick is going to age your mouth. It's going to make it look smaller, especially if you like to wear darker shades or brighter, deeper shades. But here is the perfect example. My lips look bigger now than without the lipstick, and this is a very bold color. It's just a matter, and I didn't outline the outside of my mouth. I outlined right on the lip, lip line, right on it. And my peak, I kind of make it look like a wave now instead of strong peaks because I think it is less aging uh, just to make it appear like a wave. So uh, to do that, it's just a matter of taking the line slightly across. But you can wear these colors, my friends. Oh, mm. Oh, I can't stop looking at it. It's beautiful. I love it. I think it all goes beautifully together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take my hair down and finish my look, and I will be right back, my friends. All right, my friends, so I am back with the finished look, and many of you are probably saying, crazy Miss Tammy, why do you bother curling your hair? Well, I curl it in hopes that it will turn out, and some days it just does not. So today, it got thrown back in a bun. I thought for today's look, it was perfection because I'm just wearing a white top with some black slacks, 
And uh, with the hair pulled back, it really, really makes this the center of attention. It is beautiful. And this is the Rock Rose. Uh, it is introducing fall's boldest new hue. On and this lip from Jane Aradell, oh, it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous and goes so perfectly with the Rock Rose. It's beautiful. I love a chic, elegant, sophisticated, edgy look. Love, love, love it. And I think this pulled all together perfection, my friends. Just perfection. I absolutely love it. And before we head on out, I did want to let you know that I did spritz my face with the Dewy Coconut Setting Mist. This is from e.l.f. And what this does is just takes that powdery look away, which we all need when we age. And if we're going to use powder, it does make a difference. It really does. And this one is not expensive at all. It really works well. I just spritz it and then I take my handy dandy little fan and I turn it on the high setting and I just let it dry down. And it really does take away all that powdery look. All right, my friends, so that is it for today. If you haven't already subscribed, you know I would love to have you as an ageless beauty, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Right next to it is the bell. It notifies you of all the crazy videos that I am putting up. Until the next time, my friends, go out in the world, be lovable, and remember, it is okay to love your age. I heard something, we were watching Virgin Riv River the other night, which I think they completely ruined this season but it's too lovey-dovey. It just doesn't have an interesting storyline, in my opinion. Uh, but anyway, uh, one of the older women on the show, they were sitting in a little group, and she made this statement, and I thought it was like a light bulb, and it's so true. Love your age, my friends, because everyone gets to be young, but not everyone gets to be old. Think about that. I wished my sister a happy birthday yesterday and told her that because my sister is one very blessed woman because she has had breast cancer and she has had open heart surgery and she is thriving. And so I thought, this is perfect to wish her a happy birthday and say, everyone gets to be young, but not everyone gets to be old. And that and is it for today, my friends. I love you all. Bisous.